Let's go ahead and stand up. Amen. Who's excited to be here this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. No. 
find you Jesus praise God father we thank you for your holy 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 presence hallelujah glory to God amen hallelujah Lord let your let minister life let your glorious wonderful presence manifest by the Holy Ghost saturate our lives praise God fresh and anew hallelujah oh that you just but that you infuse us with might and glory. Hallelujah. That you grant unto us boldness. Hallelujah. That we would open our mouths and speak in the name of our holy child, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders and miracles be wrought in our lives and through us and to others. Hallelujah. Proclaiming the mighty goodness of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Rasto. 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 Hallelujah. We, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Call unto me and I'll answer thee. And show thee great and hidden things thou knowest not. Hallelujah. To give you a hope and a future. And expect it in. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll turn around and tell somebody God is good all the time. Hallelujah. 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 Then you may be seated. I do think we're going to have to get us some um, film and put on the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the door right here. We're going to have to get some darkening film. Um, I can actually see up here the heat waves from outside going up. <laughs> That's really weird. I mean, if I, was, if I was OCD, I would just be sitting here the rest of the service kind of going... <laughs> My family knows I'm a little, well, they claim I'm a little OCD anyway. Hallelujah. But I think we're going to have to do something because we've got um, these, these big bright spots. What it is, it reflects off the car windows out there in the parking lot, and it, it shoots in. <clears throat> and, um, you know, there's nothing we can do about that except go back to the steel doors. No. Yeah. Y'all like those glass doors, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So we just need to get uh, those the film you put on this right, get it in a brown tone and get it dark so that you can still see it so you don't butt somebody in the head going out the door. 
that's, that's kind of why those windows are there, so you just don't slam the door open. And we got to have a prayer service for the person laying out on the floor. <laughs> I had to go to the restroom. Boom! Okay, praise the Lord. Well, glad to have all of y'all today on this um, 4th of July weekend. I got my, my revolutionary tie on. Yeah, yeah. Like my, I like this. I, I forgot. I've had this for a long time. I only wear it once a year. Huh? Huh? It is. It looks like a mask. Every day is Independence Day. That's right. Good old boys. It is a boat mask. I'm there. Yeah. Probably Boston. It's probably the Boston Tea Party. I got. <laughs> You know, telling the Brits take their taxes somewhere else. And then we, then we adopted their system. Tax, tax, tax. Oh, bless his hearts. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, hope everybody has a, a great week. A uh, few things. I, I, I'm sure if you weren't here this week, you noticed when you drove it, it was a difference outside. If you didn't, um, maybe we could help you. <laughs> Pray for you. Um, we, we spread somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 plus yards, of, cubic yards of mulch. Um, the entire playground equipment was finished off and um, stained, and um, I mean completely everything stained. Um, the, sli the slide was compounded and waxed. Um, repair was done on the uh, there was there was a couple posts that were rotted on there, so they were replaced and, and stained and fixed. Picnic tables were delivered and stained. We paid for that one. I looked at them said picnic tables and I ain't doing it. Freddie, come on over here. Hour and a half later, he had gone through six and a half, five and a half gallons of stain, stained the bottoms of them twice and the tops of them three times. You know, so they're they're good, good they're good to go for a while. Hallelujah! And um, it would have taken us three weeks to hand stain them that much, and I don't even like the idea of thinking about it. So uh, anyway, because by the time Thursday got here, I think it, most people who've been coming out here were tired. Uh, we had a couple days that. Uh, Everybody looked like we had a we had a public swimming pool out here somewhere, because they were drenched. <clears throat> and um, but anyway, um, so then we got some flowers planted up front, and um, there's a little bit more to do out there. The fire pit got put in Thursday morning, so we got um, and we got some benches, a couple of half round benches to put around that. But we, one of the things we're going to do here at the church is a lot of BYOC. Bring your own chair. Y'all just sitting out. When we have a fellowship, bring your own chair. You can get your zero gravity chair, your bag chair, whatever. And, we, you know, uh, we have picnic tables and stuff to sit at and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, those zero gravity chairs down there under those pecan trees, it's 20 degrees cooler out there. It's just cool. So um, we are, right now we're looking for a sign carver to um, – we, we really got this theme going of, you know, the park thing. Um, we have a sign coming that, that you've seen the, like, Nantahala River Gorge Recreation Area, the National Park Service signs. We got one that says Expedition Park Recreation Area coming, made just like that, made like a National Park Service sign. And then we're going to make a sign down here at the Pecan Trees. You've been on the Blue Ridge Parkway. You've been to Big Bear Overlook, elevation 300, you know, 3,000. We got, we're going to get one made that says Victory Overlook, elevation 380. 856 feet or whatever the elevation is. I took GPS to find out what our elevation is. <laughs> and I've got a sign coming with the park rules. You know. Yeah, this is not a public park. If you get hurt, it's not our fault. You know, all that stuff. We're not responsible and that, you know, play at your own risk. Um, we've got to have something like that out there because technically it's not open to the public just to come and go. However, we know they're going to do it. Because Michelle told us they, people come out, we come in here all the time, kids play on the playground, you know, and stuff. So we, you know, unless you put barbed wire fence with razor wire, people are going to come. You know, and we, we don't want to be snooty snitty about it, but we do want to protect ourselves uh, with litigate, from litigation. So we got a sign coming saying this is not a public park, you're playing at your own risk, and we're not responsible for any injuries and that kind of stuff. But it's going to be a sign, like a brown sign with a leaning tree with a picnic table, and it's going to be Expedition Park Rules. <laughs> So we're really on this theme, man. And uh, 
Um, one more thing we got to do out here is put up four four by four posts in a ten foot square around the fire pit, and then put um, galvanized pipe between them that's threaded so we can put the flange on it and square it up, and then hang um, solar lights out there. There are so lights with so they're solar powered, so we don't have to worry about getting electricity out there or anything like that. It'll just take care of that, <clears throat> and that'll be the fire pit hangout area. Now, that all being said. As members of Faith and Victory Church, if you decide you want to get in your car, drive over here and have a picnic, you could do that anytime you want to do it. This is your church. Okay? If you've got some friends, they want to, you want to bring some kids over, y'all go play on the playground and have a picnic while they're playing, y'all can do that. That is, that's legit. This is your church. Amen? So, uh, even if somebody said that, you know, could bring a pack, picnic lunch up for ch to church on Sunday and go out and picnic at the church. Anytime you want to do it. It doesn't have to be a set church event for you to use this stuff. We do ask you pack out your trash. Okay? I don't want to drive up and see Kentucky Fried Chicken bones laying over here on the playground. Okay? Hallelujah. So it is, it is for the church to use. We, and, and by the way, well, what about this? The, you know, this is so hot in, the, in the, this area up here the picnic tables are. We have four umbrellas coming. We're going to drill holes in the middle, and we're going to put those umbrellas. They're, going, they're not going to stay out there because, you know, that's too easy for the wind to blow away or, you know. <laughs> these umbrellas are made for walking, and that's just what, well, anyway, you know. Uh, but we, we will have them, so we do have a church event. We'll be able to go ahead and put those out there. They're nine foot, they'll, so they'll cover the picnic tables because they're six foot long. So you'll be able to go out there, and we'll have shade there. Um, for all four of these picnic tables. Um, praise the Lord. So we're, we're kind of excited about all of this. Amen. We are going to plant some more. We're going to bring in some topsoil right up here at the front with the flower bed to the parking lot. Put some bu buffer up there so the dirt doesn't exchange with the rock. And replant grass right here in front so that it gets a nicer, cleaner look. <clears throat> okay. We're working. In here, television lights. That's about it. So uh, that being all said, if you're giving to the building fund, that please continue to be thinking of that. I spent some money this week. <laughs> Actually, the past two and a half weeks, we spent some money. <laughs> I mean, I, I went and looked at how much we spent. Oh, mama. Uh, we, we about... About took the building fund down to zero this this past week and two weeks, two and a half weeks. But we had a lot to do. It was a lot to buy, and it, you know, and you know, when you kind of think about the electricity that we put in here and the repairing the plumbing and buying the mulch and buying the picnic tables and and all this and, and the stain, stain, the cost of all these materials, none of it's cheap. I mean, you, you go out and buy a gallon of stain, it's forty five dollars. We bought ten, at least ten gallons of stain for these projects, you know, to do the playground and to do the picnic tables. I mean, just, but it's got to be done. You just can't stick it out there and let it go to bad. I mean, it has to be done. So um, we did go through some dollars. And uh, so we're trying to cool the jets a little bit, you know. So um, we, we're going to probably have to raise the money for these because we these may be in the neighborhood of $1,000 to get the TV lights. Uh, we got to get these posts up. They're not going to be too expensive. That won't be too much of a project. Uh, it's 10-foot 4 by 4s you know, and some galvanized pipe. So that's going to be, you know, that may be three, four hundred dollars, but that'll be it for that. That'll that'll kind of finish this off, okay? Um, we do need to look into the lights. We need to look into a storage unit, look into the awning on the front of the building. We're going to have to, you know, we're priorita prioritizing. The storage unit's going to have to be next major thing. So we've got to, you know, I want to stop spending money to store stuff. I'd rather spend it on having our own place back there to put stuff in, and it be on ground. I don't have to ride over somewhere every time I want to get something. You know, it'd be right here. And at the same time, when we do move the storage units down into a one unit, we will get rid of some stuff. Because I know you're, you're supposed to keep like corporate records for seven years or something. We've got them for 35. We have, we have all the records from 1988. Yes. Technically, we had them before then because when we took the church, the, the, you know, the, they gave us the, whatever they had. And so we have, there's a bunch of stuff that could be shredded up. 
you know, and gotten rid of. So all that to say, thank you for your giving and thank you for your support. But I did want you to know this, this area is for you. Okay. It is for the church fellowships, but it's for you, you know? Um, so, um, Chris and Shannon and Dennis said so they're going to bring all the kids over and picnic and together and let them play in the playground and on, on Thursday afternoon, go for it. I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's why it's here. It's for you. And, um, you know, so just understand that. Okay. Now, you know, we, we may talk about the, the fire pit. We may want somebody here, you know, official on that just because there's issues with fire. I don't want, I don't want the three-year-old having a fire and saying, well, the pastor said we could do it. And <laughs> but I mean, anything, anything else, just, just, just go for it. Go for it. All right. And uh, Jerry, I, you're probably going to ride out here and see Jerry's car here and him out under the tree. Jerry likes those trees. We'd be out here working and say, where's Jerry? You look down there. There's Jerry. He'd gone and found the trees. Praise the Lord. All right. So um, a couple things. Dr. Bill will be ministering Wednesday night. Um, we are, we are um, praise the Lord. We'll be right back with you guys. Um, next Sunday, Olivia Moore will be with us in the morning service. Some of y'all remember Olivia from a few years ago in the, in the community center and uh, sweetheart, you know, she went to a, a place. She's, you know, she wrote a book called you'll not be remembered for that, for this. Um, but I'm, I'm sure she's not going to share that same message everywhere she goes the second time and third time. But, um, she's been all, since she was here with us last, she's been all over the world. And I mean, out in the bush for three weeks or four weeks without a bath. You know, glad she got back to Mary and took one. Um, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. But she'll be with us next Sunday morning. And we're looking forward to having her and um, glory to God. So now it's time to give. You need an offering envelope, raise your hand. I should be glad to assist you. Uh, if, or otherwise, on the front, if you're on the front row and need one, uh, raise your hand. Otherwise, uh, you can find uh, one on the front, front of you or you can go use your PayPal or cash app. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Father, we thank you for the tithe and the offering. We thank you for the people that are blessed. We thank you heaven's windows are opened up unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for pouring out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Receive the in-house offerings. And then the electronic offerings. We'll come in. And Children's Church, you guys are dismissed. Up, two, three, four. Keep it up. Two, three, four. All right. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the fourth chapter. The Gospel of Mark, we're talking about um, what to do when the storms of life come. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, Jesus said in the parable, he said, you know, I would like you to a, a wise man who uh, built his house, dug deep, founded it upon the rock. When the winds came and the, and the waters rose and the floods came, the house stood. 
But the unwise man built his own sand. <clears throat> and when it looked the same way, the house looked the same. The same storm came and it fell and great was the fall of it. So, and, and we have to build our house on the rock. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? And now Jesus, remember Jesus told Peter, um, Peter, he said, Jesus asked the disciples, said, um, who do you say that I am? And they answered and said, well, some say that you're Elijah, some say that or Elias, and, you know, some say that thou art um, Isaiah, one of the prophets come back. And Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus turned to Peter and says, I say unto thee, uh, thou art Petros, a stone, a pebble. Not, not, you know, it's Peter, King, King James uses Peter. But he says in the Greek, you are Petros, a stone, a pebble. But I say, and I say unto you, upon this Petra, I will build my church. Boulder, big, huge rock. So from the Greek, we are not making Peter the head of the church. Okay. Now, that's what's been done is that Peter has became the head of the church because Jesus said that. Jesus just said, you're, you're a stone. In other words, you're, you're stony. You're, you're solid. Then he says, and upon this Petra, not on the Petros, on the Petra, I will build my church. Well, it was the Petra. It wasn't Peter. It was on the knowledge, that statement he made, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Because Jesus said, thou art blessed, Simon Peter, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to thee, but my father which is in heaven hath revealed this unto thee. Amen? Okay? He says, and upon this, you know, so I say thou art Petrus, and I will build, and upon this Petra, I will build my church. It was the revelation knowledge. The rock that the church is built on is the revelation knowledge of God's word. The, the knowledge revealed, not by flesh and blood, but by my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. And so the church is built on a rock of knowledge, revelation knowledge, supernatural revealed knowledge from the Word of God by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Jesus, we know, is what? The Logos. He is the entire encompassment of our entire... Um, not just the embellishment. He is the entire corporate fullness of God's word. He's the Logos. In the beginning was the Logos. The Logos was with God. The Logos was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14. And the Logos became flesh. Not just a rhema. See, so Jesus is the whole. The revelation is the rhema. Amen. So the rhema comes from the Logos. All right. So no matter how we put it, the church is built on the rock of revelation of Jesus Christ being the Son of God and the plan of redemption. Amen. If you don't go down and build on the rock, you're going to be in trouble. If you build on um, church ideologies and not on the rock, you're going to be in trouble. If you build on uh, preferred narratives and not on the rock, you're going to get in trouble. What do you mean preferred narratives? One of the things we've done in the past 30 years or so is we've zeroed in on something. And that's the only thing there is. Hello? Now, even during the word of faith height of word of faith teaching, there's some things the people wouldn't teach because it, they thought it kind of went against their narrative. They just, they wouldn't touch it. So they really didn't understand. Amen. I said, they didn't understand. Now, now we got the grace narrative is, is the, is the more the, the newest, latest, greatest. And the same thing. If it, if it's contrary to their narrative, they won't even touch it. You know, well, or, or the love, the, the, the teaching on love. God can't judge because he's love. And the Bible says something really interesting. Judge not lest ye be judged. But you know what it says after that? And if I do judge, my judgment is just. What do you mean judge not? Don't have unjust judgment. In other words, don't, don't be judgmental 
from a purely soulish standpoint. If you're judging something, you're going to have to judge it from the Word of God Amen. and based on the Word of God, you know? You're judging me because you said that being homosexual is a sin. That's not judgment. That's, that's just judgment because that's what the Word of God says. And, you know, and it's in no so un uncertain terms. So we, we, can't, we have to understand, we, we have to build on the rock, not on opinion. Uh, I, um, you know, I grew up in a denomination. Most of, some, a lot of y'all did too. And when you joined the church, you had to, you know, you went up in front of the church and they opened up the manual of the church and they went down and read, do you believe? And that's good to have, you know, you gotta, you gotta have, <clears throat> you gotta understand that you're what you believe. I understand that. But that carried more weight than the Bible. Y'all hear you going home. I'm going to just tell you, um, <clears throat> if the if the manual of the such and such church said one thing and you could find the Bible that says something different, the manual took precedent. Well no. You better change you better change the manual. Amen. So we talked about building your house on the rock withstanding the storm. And then, you know, the storms of life are going to come. Amen. And so the, the storms are designed to do certain things. Go with me, if you will, as I said to Mark 4, look at verse 2. Mark 4, verse 2. Uh, Shannon, I am sorry. I, I didn't get my water off my desk. And that, hallelujah. Now, y'all got to be really quick on the, on the Internet to cover up the quirky things I do all of a sudden. Okay. I'm called to make you better. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's my calling in life. Make you better. And he taught them, we're going to be going through verse 20. You can go ahead and write that in your notes. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. This is the doctrine of Jesus. I think that's pretty good doctrine. What do y'all think? Yeah. Hearken. That means, you know, that's King Jimmy for listen up. Pay attention. Okay. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground, which had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was uh, alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, <laughs> Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without they, are these things done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their eyes, uh, signs, sins should be forgiven them. This is a quote from Isaiah. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then shall you know all parables? Now, wow. Jesus makes a pretty bold statement here. Everything understood in parables has to be understood through the meaning of this. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I, I heard some people get out of some cans of WD-40 and start spraying on that brain because them gears were just going, <laughs> kicking in. This is a key parable. Amen. Literally. A key parable. It unlocks the mysteries of so many other things. The sower soweth the word. And notice how much of the Bible focuses us back to the word of God. The 119th Psalm is dedicated in every single verse to the importance and value and significance of the word of God. Amen. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Amen. I mean, thy precepts, thy statutes. I mean, on and on and on and on. And so the word of God 
is central to understanding everything. Not opinion. Now, let me say this. We are a Holy Ghost church. We believe in speaking in tongues. We believe in laying hands on the sick. We believe in casting out devils. We believe in moves of the Spirit. We believe in prophecy. We believe in tongues and interpretation of tongues. We believe that God speaks to us supernaturally, words of, words of wisdom and words of knowledge. We believe in all those things, discerning of spirits. But I'm telling you, it doesn't supersede the written word. You cannot, listen, we got, we got pseudo-Christian cults out there right now that their living prophets, quote, supersede their dead prophets. So if you come along and go, and there's, and there's more than one group. There's, there's, there's a couple of groups that do this now. Um, actually, actually, I can think of three of them right off. Three groups that their living prophet has precedent over a dead prophet. <clears throat> Meaning you can come along and if they're getting a lot of flack about a certain doctrine in the church, a prophet can stand up and prophesy something and change it. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Well, that's not so. You just can't go in and just change this because you don't like it. Are you here? You gone home? <clears throat> All right. So the word, the written word. And, and, and Jesus, I mean, not Jesus, uh, Peter says this, that the Word and the Spirit agree. The Word and the Spirit agree. So somebody come along and go, well, yay, just say it, the Lord. Um, you know, homosexuality is not a sin. Yeah, I know what Lord said that. The Elzebub. The maggot Lord. Lord of the flies. That means Lord of the flies. Beelzebub means Lord of the flies, and maggots are the base of flies. So the maggot Lord would say that. Not God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, and God the Son. Amen? All right. The sower sows the word. And these are by the wayside where the word is sown, and when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word and was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise that are sown on stony ground, who when they heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. Woo, praise God. And had no root in themselves. And so endured for a while afterward, when affliction or persecution cometh, um, arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. These are they which are sown among thorns, which are here the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sent upon good ground and hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, sixty, and some a hundred. Now, that scripture is used in our circles 99.99% of the time about money. And Jesus actually taught it, meaning about the fruit of the word working in you. Now, it could have something to do with money, but. You know, Brother Hagin said, asked a question in Top Summit meeting back in 2000, whatever. He looked at one of the preachers and said, have you ever received a hundredfold? Talking about taking, calculating the money you gave and getting a hundredfold return on that, which is something like 10,000 percent. And they went, well, I believe I have. That was their confession of faith. And when you got a book coming out next month called Hundredfold, you got to kind of hard not to stay, you know. Hold your ground. <laughs> anyway, now this is it's, it's really talking about the return on the word. We made it all about money. We do that too much. Hello? Not everything's about money, honey. Now, money is affected. Money is, you know, and listen, I'm going to be honest with you. If we don't follow the biblical principles in the first place, all your confession and all your supernatural this and supernatural ain't going to work. If you don't follow what the Word of God teaches you to do with your money. That was enthusiastic. Yeah. I don't have one person that going, Hanky, preach, pastor, preach, go ahead on. Get your hand Hanky, let him go. All right, so there are five things that the storms of life are designed to do against your foundation. One, the Bible says this, affliction arises. 
And it means uh, sufferings due to the pressure of circumstances. How many have ever been afflicted? Don't give me no faith confession that you've never been afflicted. That's not even a faith confession. That's a stupid confession. I'll never have another troubled day as long as I live. And please give me the scripture that gives you that, that you'll never have another trouble the rest of your life. That's right. Brother Hagin's asked and said, Brother, Brother Hagin, pray for me that I'll never have any more trouble with the devil. You want me to pray for it that you die? <laughs> so he told him. <laughs> I think so. How did, how did he get away with that kind of stuff? I just say something a little funny and people get mad and walk out. <laughs> he took the water hose on a person in a car one time. Put it right on them. Board member or something. Yeah. That's honorary. Now, it, it means due to pressure of circumstances um, or the antagon antagonism of persons. You can be afflicted. Listen, you go, you're, you're, you're coming into the church, you're coming to God, you start praying, <clears throat> and then afflictions come. What does it come for? It's come to get that word. It's come to steal that word. It's come, now it says this, it says when a persecution, afflictions and persecution arise, I mean, uh, for the word's sake, let me, let me, uh, persecution means to put the flight, to drive away, to pursue. People persecuting you because you're a Christian. Uh, you believe that mess? <clears throat> you go to one of them churches? So afflictions, circumstances of life, well, I just thought everything, I just thought I had everything in order and it's all going good. Then this happened. That's going to happen. Honey, I'm telling you, it's going to, things like that are going to happen. The minute you think you got the grip on it, that God's got it all in control, nothing, couldn't anything go wrong, boom. What's up there? It's there to steal the word, to push you off the word. And the Bible says this, and they are offended. It's a bad word because it doesn't convey the meaning in our thinking today that it may have in 1611. It literally means to cause to stumble or to fall. You hear me? Stumble at that, at what the word was trying to get into you. You're stumbling either because of being persecuted by people or because of afflictions that come. You stumble and fall instead of holding on to that word and staying steadfast with it. Remember this, the Bible teaches us to be steadfast. But those persecutions and afflictions come. Now, and I'm going to tell you something. We divide these five things up into two categories, external and internal. These first two are external. The afflictions and persecution are external. They're coming from the outside. So Satan will immediately send something, try to send something. And you guys stand your ground. Amen? Well, I went to that church, laid hands on me, and I hurt worse today than I did yesterday. That's affliction. You got to stand your ground. You understand what I'm saying? And have you done all to stand, stand there for? You got to stand. <clears throat> but that affliction, which is a circumstance, or that persecution, people. Oh, what do you, I mean, I'm going to tell you that's the dumbest thing. You went to a church that had some people pray for you, like you're going to get, get healed. And, and, of course, the night before, man, you felt the power go in. That glory went all over you. Knocked you in the floor. You were out for 30 minutes. Got up. I believe I received my healing in Jesus' name. Next morning, you're hurt. Afflictions come. And you share something with somebody, some unbelieving believer. Ah, you can't get healed that way. I'm going to tell you, I know somebody had that and they died. Guarantee it. They'll come. What have you got to do? You got to stand. Or you're going to stumble and fall. That, that's what Satan's out there to do. He wants to come against you. He doesn't want the word to take root. He doesn't want it to grow. He doesn't want it to produce in your life. Why? Because he loses. And you win. Amen? And so he's 
fights against that and he'll use people or circumstances to cause you to stumble and fall. Amen. See, Jesus is telling them this. Why? You've got to be prepared. See, we, we preach. It is so easy to preach the um, people happy and clappy and have everybody going, whoa, yeah, glory to God. That's right. But if we don't give them what they need when the glory to God, that's right, is kind of quiet and the affliction and the persecution comes and what to do to how to stand in that next moment, we could lose that battle. Amen. I, lo I love the glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. But we've got to know that there is a th enemy out there. Amen. The sower so in the word. Hello. I said the sower so in the word. But Satan comes immediately. He, he comes to try to steal it. Before you can even get out of the parking lot, he's trying to come and get it. I mean, he's like red bone. Come and get that seed. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. What's the matter? Would you believe that Bible? <laughs> I've come to get that word. And that, well, we're not going to let him. Amen. Amen. You're going to hold fast. But if the Bible says this, we, we're not ignorant of his devices. If you know what he's going to try to do, when he tries to come, get ready. Because that mean, the fact that he came to try to get it ought to tell you you got something. That's why he came. He wouldn't bother with it if, he didn't, if you didn't get it. You heard it. It was sown. He's come to steal it. Don't let him. Oh, it's easy. Well, you know, this is the 35th time I've tried this. Go for 36, glory to God. And I'm not talking about faking it till you make it. I'm talking about staying with it until you're walking in it. Amen? Just pursue it and stay after it. Be, be like Abraham Lincoln. How many times did he fail before he, he won the, the, a, a place in the Senate? I mean, he was an eight... Had he been running the office today, they would have never, ever, ever, ever sent him a penny. Although his, his image was on it. I messed with that because he caught that one. Kind of like, you know, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln invented the internet or something. Satan comes immediately to steal the word. And by using affliction and persecution, he can get you to cause you to fall. That word don't even have a chance to get going. It just, it just, we, can't, we can't be ignorant. We've got to stay after it. Amen? Now, those are the external things. So understand, external things are going to come. Man, you're going to come in. We're going to have a, have, come in here and have a Holy Ghost service. We've got people stacked up all over the place, laying hands on them. Power of God's falling. I mean, the glory. So you see the glory cloud, flashes of lightning. We've had it all happening. You go out the next morning, wake up and get out of, bed, out of bed, and there's a crick that you didn't have the day before down here on the lower side or something. Oh, man, I thought, see, you can't go there. Man, I thought I got something last night. It's like the guy who can't call me one day. He used to be in our church, and he called me one day just laughing on the phone, said, hey, I'm over here in the laughing services. You need to get over here. They were going morning, noon, and night. I mean, laughing all day for six weeks. Now, before that guy showed up in town, this guy was e or on steroids. It's no joke. He just walked around like e or. I mean, he walked around. Um, you know, you'd see him in public. How you doing? So? Well, you know, I mean, pure e or. Just absolute evil. He calls me. He's turned into Tigger. <laughs> All right. You need to get, he, he can't even talk to me. He's laughing. For six weeks. 
See him a month or so after the guy packs up and leaves town from that church, went and held that revival. And when they didn't, he went six weeks. He's gone. I saw him in public. Eeyore had returned. <laughs> Why? Because affliction and persecution comes and steals the word. And if you don't know what to do about it, listen, manifestations of the spirit aid and help us, but you're going to have to keep it and hold it and, 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 and integrate it into your life with the word. Without the word, you're not going to be able to hold on to it. Amen. We love the Holy Ghost. And we love when he does his marvelous works in our midst. Then take the word of God, keep it. And don't let the devil come and steal it. Amen. Because he's after it. Now, is the word better? Is, is are the Holy Ghost, the word, you know, one superior to the other? No. They agree. They're at, the spirit of God and the word of God, the son, you know, Jesus, the Logos, are after the same thing. Your complete wholeness. Amen. But they do work together. Even with the word, it's the Holy Ghost revealing it to you. He's the teacher. But you've got to have the word working. All right. So those two are external. Those are the two easiest ones to recognize. Because they're outside coming at you. The next three, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in are internal. They don't recognize them as easy, as easy. Now, notice that the Bible says this, that the afflictions and persecutions, you're, they're offended. They fall. But the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. Literally to strangle or drown it. Hello? Hello? To strangle or drown that word. And it's coming from the inside. I've always told people this. Self-deception is the worst kind of deception. Because you don't believe you're wrong, ever. If you're deceived from the outside, with enough time, you, a lot of times you can help people get undeceived. But when you deceive yourself, Mm. So, cares of this world means to be drawn in different directions, to be distracted. Uh, that which causes this, a care, especially an anxious care. You're letting <clears throat> things, you know, you wor it's worry. Start worrying. Well, what if it doesn't happen? What if this didn't work? What if I'm wrong? What if? Worry. Be anxious. Don't worry about anything. Amen. Worry enters in. Worry will strangle the word. I've seen Christians. You say, but so and so, the Bible says this. Yeah. Well, one person told a preacher one time, said this. They said, he said, if you couldn't worry, they wouldn't have anything to do. I mean, there, we, we got people we call worry warts. Worry, 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 worry. They invent stuff to worry about. Now, I grew up in a house. Where, uh, my brother and, and his wife, when they got married, made the, probably for them the biggest mistake they ever made, moved two houses down from where we lived, or two houses in between. Out on the front porch at night, not me, looking down there to see if they're home because they went to the attic or the, to, or, or to the Jolly Roger in downtown Greenville because the Tams are playing. East Carolina Pirates, you got to have the Jolly Roger, okay? <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> so, and of course, the Jolly Roger had the lighted dance floor, and, and, but upstairs in the attic, which was the noose, I don't know why they use a noose for the attic, but it was a noose. Um, and it wasn't racial because the fans played there all the time. 
let me say that the Tams, they weren't white. Okay. The Atlanta Tams, you know. Never heard of them. Never heard of the Atlanta Tams. Never heard be young, be foolish, be happy. Yeah. That's Atlanta Tams. Okay. <laughs> I've been hurt. What kind of fool do you think I am? Atlanta Tams. Okay. So you've heard of them. You just didn't know you'd heard of them. I mean, you had one call, you lied, you lied, 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 you lied to your daddy. All right. Yeah, <laughs> Nathan's going on. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> they weren't home. Bobby, they're in a car, they're in a ditch somewhere, turned upside down, drowning. And worry and worry and worry and worry. And we'd go to bed until they drove up in the driveway. I grew up hearing this all the time. I mean, I couldn't go fly and preach the gospel overseas. You don't need to be in no airplane. I am safer at 33,000 feet in the will of God than I am at home in my living room out of the will of God. Amen. That's what I started saying. Mm -hmm. yes. That didn't go over. Okay, worry, worry, worry will, will cause the word of God to choke. It'll choke your faith because worry is faith in the negative. It's fear. All fear is, is having faith in the negative. You believe it's going to come to pass. Yeah. And I told you. You know, they've been in the wreck. I know they've been in the wreck. And then if you find out they've been in the wreck. Oh, I told you they've been in the wreck. Dodie Osteen told John one time, because he, 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 she say, John, I'm sick. I'm going, you know, don't say that, Dodie, you'll die. He, she said, but I'm sick. He said, don't say that, you'll die. Finally, she said, looked at him one day and said, John, because she wasn't quite getting the word of faith yet at that point. Okay. She, and she outlived him. <coughs> Praise God. So worry will, will. Drown the word. You can't let worry function. Well, what if it didn't work? Oh my gosh. I prayed and I didn't get, get, get an instant answer. What if it didn't work? It's just worrying. You're, you're letting the what ifs, or as we like to say, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, take precedent over what the, but thus saith the Lord. Well, what do I do? You just go spend more time and thus say at the Lord. And let the word enter in and let the word drown and choke worry. Take it down. Amen. I mean, just get so strong in faith that worry can't function. Now, the other one is deceitfulness of riches. Now, these next two move beyond just worrying about stuff to character issues. Thank you for your enthusiasm. The deceitfulness of riches, to cheat, deceive, beguile, to give a false impression, whether by appearance, statement, influence, or riches. If you have a wrong heart about things, hello? And remember the Bible says this, uh, talking about they that would be rich have pierced themselves with, through with many sorrows. Well, how, how can we believe in prosperity? And also the Bible say that they that would be rich, Brother Bill's going, he's working. He knows he's under the gun now because I can see how fast he's working. <laughs> I don't even have to turn around. I'm right here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do, 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 do. I'm just putting pressure on just to aggravate. Okay. <laughs> Apparently it's working. Yeah. <laughs> See, one thing about the prosperity, and this is what Brother Hagin said when he, you know, he wrote the book, The Midas Touch, to what? Combat the excess of the prosperity teaching in, the, in our church, in the churches. The Midas Touch. So un, so, um, so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
it was such an issue that he had to hold off releasing it for a year after it went to publisher. He was going to release it in the one camp meeting and he had such a bad blowback about it. He held off another year before he let it go out. Okay. So he could do some teaching, more teaching and try to bring balance so people get out of error. Okay. You can get so caught up with financial money, money. It's become a deceit to you. Okay. It, it's a deceitfulness. It's, it's the, the deceit. They will trick you. The, you know, well, I'm, I want to be rich so I can give to the kingdom. I remember that, that guy in West Virginia, that one of the first major lottery winners. Okay. Comes out. I'm going to tithe them. I tried like one seventy million dollars. I mean, that that time was like the biggest one that had they had had. I'm going to tithe my church. Never, as far as we know, the church never saw the money. Granddaughter was murdered. He walked around and was going into bars, strip clubs with half a million dollars in a briefcase all the time. He died early. What happened? The deceitfulness of riches took hold of him. Hello, are you here? It, it, the cheat, the cheat, the deceit, to beguile. Riches will beguile you. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There are some people who have not received any kind of prosperity that they think they're going to get. One reason? Because their heart's not right. You, listen. Well, I, was, I gave. I did what the Bible says. And you... You know, when Jesus, when, when Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Yeah. The willingness parts your character. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which are, and actually the Greek says is a, is a root of all, all kinds of evil. Okay. <laughs> well, this is a, listen, let me tell you something. If some guy comes in and catches his wife with another man, he blows his head off. It had nothing to do with money. That was, that was, that was, that was you know, it was passion. It was, it was a crime of passion. Okay. Had nothing. To, so not everything is related to money, but the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Okay. Which is what it really says in the Greek. And that would be more accurate. You can understand when, where, where something like that I just said had nothing to do with money. Amen. But there's all kinds of things that have to do with money. And a lot of stuff has to do with money. I mean, you could say when something don't look right, follow the money. And, 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 and most of the time it is the money. So while some coveted after have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Wow. Erred from the faith. What? Choked the word. Drowned the word. We start teaching prosperity. Give up to the preacher. Got to give to the higher anointing. You know, let me wear my wind jacket that's got um, spandex, or not spandex, but you know, the. Elastic. Elastic. Elastic, there you go, in the bottom. So it holds tight. So when you shove money down in my coat, it just stays in there instead of falling out on the ground. Saw it happen in person, live. Right there. Turn my stomach. I mean, it was enough to gag a maggot. I'm going to tell you the truth. Well, and, and, and got to give to the higher anointing, you know, and I want to be rich so I can spread the gospel all over the world. Well, there is enough truth in there that you can get the deceitfulness of riches can steer you right into, amen, being distracted, going in a different direction. Hello? Are you, are you here? To give a fault to beguile you. There's deceitfulness. Um, too many people have given because they wanted to get rich because they really wanted to be on the next program of Robin Leach's The Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous. They wanted him showing up at that. Oh, they would give the Lord the credit. As they left and the church never saw him again. 
Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. There is a balance to this. But one, one of the, and I'm not trying to say that God, doesn't want us, God does want us to prosper. I believe biblical prosperity. I believe God wants to have you walking in a place of abundance and overflow. But you, you have to have your heart right and make sure that you let the word work in you. And you don't, you're, you're positioning yourself not to be deceived by riches. Let me give you an example. I shared this example a few weeks ago. I'll share it again. A person who was in the church at the time came to me, and they were going to um, start setting up vending machines. You know, it was, it was a big thing, you know. Uh, it, it didn't last long, but it, you, people going as entrepreneurs and putting in candy machines and cigarette machines in the foyers of restaurants. You know, that, that, the cigarette thing got, got knocked in the head as soon as they passed the law. You couldn't smoke in the restaurants. They'll do away with that one. And I, one of the greatest rules they ever made, I loved it, because I hated going in when we only have smoking open. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to sit down and eat my steak and smell your cigarette. I'm sorry. It's just nasty. Okay? Medea nasty. All right? And uh, they came to me, and I know I, I know I just shared this not too long ago, but I'm going to share it again it kind of fits here. Came to me. Yeah. Pastor, I can make all kinds of money and tie to the church doing these vending machines. What do you think? I, you know, thank God God gives you wisdom. Because I could have gone all Pentecostal on them. If God wanted people to smoke, he'd put a smokestack on their head. <laughs> Some of y'all are going to get that in a little while. Right, amen. Amen. Um, but I didn't, I said, well, cause they, they, they were, they were ready to roll with this. They'd already talked to somebody who was kind of going to set them up and get them into this. And, uh, all they had to do was put them in, stock, stock them, take the money out, pay for the product. And they had this money left over. They were going to make extra that, you know, of course, they, anytime somebody starts selling your stuff, it's going to be the pie in the sky. You know, I mean, if you're going into Amway, you're going to be a double diamond in three years. I mean, you know. You're going to live in, in, in the house in, in Raleigh from the guy from my hometown of Aiden has. Okay. He, he's like way, way up there. Indoor tennis courts, indoor swimming pools. Takes you to his house to show you his house. So, you know, somebody, like a pastor of a big church, he'll take them there so he can get the church. I get a pastor of a thousand people in my program. In my downline, I got the whole church because he'll, he'll go out in his church and have everybody in the church in it. And they're selling it. Even if they just buy the, the minimum $100 a month for the self. Okay? So the pie in the sky. But you, we're going to make all kinds of, and we're going to tithe. Of course, you know, they start throwing that number out. The, you, know, you, can make, you can be as much as such, such a month for the church. Well, you know, you go, hey, every pastor goes, well, we can use more money. Not less. Never heard a pastor get up and say, we can use less money this month. It just don't happen. You always, you always need more. I mean, you know. Uh, after this past week, I need more. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. When I, when I, when I ching, ching a couple of things, I went, Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're our source. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need to do it. All right. Amen. And glad we're in a position we could do it, but when I mean, there was a time we couldn't have done it, but thank God we could. And, um, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, seriously. So anyway, I said, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Because they, they, they were really going, probably no matter what I said, they would have, they would have gone and done it anyway. You know? So it says, you know, or they've been mad at me because I told them they couldn't, they're going to lose this money. That, that'll happen. Well, we're struggling over here financially. The pastor cut off a source of our, our stream of our income because he told me it was sin. Okay, I said, tell you what, when you get down there to load up the cigarette machine and you got the boxes of cigarettes in your hand and you pull them out and you're going to stick them in there, stop and hold them up and say, Lord, I put these in this machine for your glory to honor you and to magnify you in Jesus name. And I said, then go ahead and fill it up. They came back. We couldn't do it. What? 
the, the, the vending machines, we couldn't do it. They couldn't pray and say, Lord, I'm doing this for your glory. It just stopped it. Like the woman who came to Brother Hagin one time, and, and um, that's what the Lord reminded me of when I, when I was dealing with this. Came to him and said, uh, Brother Hagin, I'd get saved, but I can't. Why can't you? Because I love to dance. And you know, understand, Pentecostals, social dancing in any manner, way, shape, and or form would send you straight to hell. Am I right, Jerry? Us Pentecostals, you couldn't take your wife in the living room and slow dance with your wife because it would send you straight to hell. <laughs> I mean, and they would know you've been social dancing because you would have the smell of fire and brimstone on your clothes when you came into the next service. Now, there's a whole lot of social dancing you better not be doing twerking and all that nasty mess. Okay. I, mean, I think back in the seventies, it was the grind or the bump and all that nasty mess. We've, they've always had nasty stuff, yeah. but I mean, she said, but I'd love to dance. He says, sister, don't worry about that. He said, go ahead and give your heart to Jesus and you dance all you want to. She said, I can. He said, yeah, you dance all you want to. So she got saved, came back a couple weeks later and said, I see what you're talking about. He said, what? She said, the want to's gone. She didn't want to go out clubbing and dancing anymore because she got saved. The want to was gone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, but deceitfulness of riches, when you, when you just, not everything, not everything because it's got money attached to it is a blessing from God. The, the, the Lord, the God gives you the power to get wealth <coughs> and adds no sorrow therewith. Now, let me say this. There is wealth you can get that will bring sorrow with it. It'll bring all kinds of problems with it. Go out and sell drugs. You will have a lot of sorrow. Amen? Oh, there's another one that says he has no sorrow there with. I'm not sure where it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, what? You steal from them, they'll kill you. You don't bring the money back like you're supposed to. They will kill you. Amen. She had a student. They found his body uh, last year over behind the Dollar General on Random and Road down by, behind there. It was, it was a hit. The SRO, he told me it was a hit. They know, they know it was a hit. Shot seven times, stabbed seven times. It was one of the signs for one of the, one of the gangs. They had picked him up. He had done something. With their whatever, they went and got him, had him in the car, talking to him, and then turned right around while I was talking to him in the back seat and got boom, 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 seven shots. Then took him out and stabbed him seven times, threw him down the hill and left him. 20 years old. She had him as a freshman and a sophomore. That's sorrow. He can get money, but that's sorrow. Are you here? I had students in my school, one of them. Selling drugs all the time. Do, come in, smell like the, the, the bong factory every day. I mean, they kept clothes at the school for him to change into. Yeah, that's, I know, that's a whole other story there. Stupidity. You know, not getting him help, just changing his clothes. Selling stuff. Loved the kid. You talk about personality out the wazoo. Great smile. I mean, you just, you just wanted to love the kid. I mean, you know. Was at a funeral for one another gang member, and they had a shootout over there. Seventy rounds were fired. He got hit by return rent fire from the from the cops. They were after him. Another gang thing. Pulled up as they walked out of the service at the church, and just opened up, and started firing. He's dead, and it didn't surprise one of us. We didn't want it to be that way. You talk to him. Say, man, you got to live right. You got to live straight. You can't do this. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. But, you know, it's just too hard to get out of it. Riches, the deceitfulness of riches, I mean, they, they will grab you and they will choke you. And, and listen, there's sorrow with the wrong kind of wealth. 
So just not, so I said that to say this. Just because somebody comes along and starts telling you, -da 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 God's going to make you rich and God's going to do this, you got to watch out for the deceitfulness of those riches. And if you're doing it so you only so you can get rich, go back to that other verse and watch out. They that would be rich. Amen. Remember, he said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. Just because you can get more rich of it don't mean it's the blessing of the Lord. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I said, just because you can make money off of it doesn't mean it's the blessing of the Lord. Amen. You can, you can make money by robbing banks. That's not the blessing of the Lord. <clears throat> you can make money ripping people off. Charging for stuff that you didn't do. Bring the car into the shop and say, well, we did such, 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 and you didn't do it. That's not the blessing of the Lord. Y'all here, you gone home. Who's here? Okay. Nobody said anything. I was just wondering which, where, where you were. Were you home or here? Okay. The lust of other things entering in. Now, the word lust means strong desire used only two, three times in the Bible. Luke 22, Philippians 1, and 1 Thessalonians 2 um, in a good sense. Everywhere else is used in a negative, bad sense. The word translated lust. And then those are translated desire. But the desire or lust of other things enter in, it will choke the word. You have a stronger desire to do it your way, not to go through the way God said do it, whatever. It'll make the word of God unfruitful. These things, so these, these internal things are deal with your character. They deal with where you are in your heart. Amen. Now, I had, we, we, a number of years ago, we had a minister. He was from, um, at the time, it was Southwest Africa. But then, it, you know, they, um, they changed the name back to the original name of the country, Namibia. Um, but he grew up there uh, under South, Southwest Africa. And at some point in time, you know, they, they went and changed the Constitution and changed it back to the original name of the country, Namibia. And um, so he was with us. And he had, he had come. He came a couple of times, and I forgot his name. It's been so many years, but I mean, really good guy. And uh, minister of church was a good ministry. He just had he had never called me a, again, um, you know, because you know it was, it was kind of one of those things. He was traveling in the country because he came to become minister, and um, but he had just come from this place up in Virginia, a camp meeting up there, and um, he, we were having dinner. He said, "No, I, um, I was up there at the such such," and, and I knew who the people were. Okay, I knew the. I knew the group that held this camp meeting. And um, he said, yeah, I was there. And he said, you know, um, he said, we had that woman from Brazil. They had that woman from Brazil there on Thursday night of that week. The place holds 3,000 people. He said it was full. And we're talking about gold dust woman. Okay? You know, you'd be sitting in the front row and all of a sudden little uh, bits of gold dust appear on your Bible. And then they would open, all of a sudden, when they get to cut the offering, people would just open their pocketbooks for this miracle. These few people had a little bit of gold dust. And, of course, I'm always thinking, my, my thing is like this, Brother Benny. If they can get gold dust on the Bibles, why don't they just take a collection of the, the gold dust there and give that to them for their offering? See, we've had these charlatan-type things going on for years in the church. The, the, the blood, the oil running down, the feathers falling out, proof. That was proven to be false. Willie George went in with his slow motion recording cameras or high speed cameras, recorded it, played it down at super slow motion and saw how the woman was getting all the stuff out of her sleeves. That's the kind of people you want to kind of do like, like um, Elijah, pour water on it, cut the sleeves off, see if you can pull this one off. <laughs> if you don't have any sleeves on your blouse, see if you can pull it off that way. No, she didn't have on short sleeves. Okay. Proved it. Proved. And everybody was having them. Everybody was having her. Feathers. I'm having all the oil. They were all having her in churches. All the big all the big shots. Hello? 
And um, that woman died early, the gold dust woman. He said, she didn't do anything except walk around and, and do this. There was nothing, the, the, what she ministered or whatever, but didn't have any meat to it, nothing to it. 3,000 people were in there. He said, the next night, there's this young man, he preached. They had 80 people. He said, he preached the word of God. I mean, he, 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 what he shared had power, had life in it, had anointing in it, and only 80 people showed up. You see, it's too easy to let the lust of other things and the deceitfulness of riches and cares of this world to enter in from the inside. It's a character thing. And we have to keep our heart right before the Lord. Remember, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, reminded him to be a, a steward of the mysteries of God, to be a good steward of the mysteries of God. We have to be faithful good stewards of the things of God. What does that mean? We got to keep our heart in check. Well, I deserve prosperity. Now, I grew up, the, 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 the narrative for the preacher was, Lord, you keep him humble and we'll keep him poor. Well, then we've got over there, we found out that, you know, that the labor is worthy of his hire. You don't muzzle the oxen that treadeth out the corn, et cetera, et cetera. Labor is worthy of, uh, of honor, especially of, of uh, double honor, especially those that labor in word and deed. Then we went to the other extreme. Got to make sure the preacher's rich. You got pre churches giving pastors $35,000, you know, BMWs on Pastor Appreciation Day. You know? He goes, that's just a $35,000 brand new. And, and, of course, the congregation has been beat up to get that money out of them. Now, some of you may ask, why don't we have Pastor Appreciation Day? We shut it down a few years ago. The church gave us, took up money, ended up giving us a, a couch, this, this couch and the love seat that went in my bonus room. Nice stuff. Still have it. But there was a fight over it. Want to know who, where, where the money was coming from, and who's, and 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 how much did it cost? And uh, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And I said, I ain't gonna have the church falling out over, with one another over blessing me. Dog, I'll go buy it myself. I don't need that kind of appreciation. Now, I've been told I was wrong. I've been told by my other, you know, pastors, Pastor Ed, you're wrong. You need to let your people give. And I, I said, I can't. I, I just shut it down. I, won't, I wasn't willing to have that going on. Now, maybe I shouldn't have shut it down. Maybe I should have, you know, let people do what they want. But I just, we just shut it down. I said, nope. I ain't, I ain't having, I'm not being a party to a church fallout over blessing me. Because there whole, ain't a whole lot of blessing in that. At the end of the day. Amen. And I don't want nobody going around beating people up. You know, verbally. How much can you sacrificially give? To be good? I mean, we want to know how much is in your bank account. You can give 30% of that now. Come on now. Pastor deserves. Say, I'm your servant. I'm sent by God. Amen. I'm not, I'm, not, hey, would I like for you for, to drive out, go outside this afternoon with a $35,000 car sitting down there? Of course. Who wouldn't like that? I mean, but at what cost? What price do you pay for that? Because if the, you know, if the price is greater than, it's, than, than what it was intended for, then it's not worth it. Amen. And if we lose four church families over, Blessing the pastor, then I'm not blessed. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. How enthusiastic are you? Don't sound very enthusiastic. So again, two external afflictions and persecutions, three internal. You can recognize the external really easy and deal with it. The internal is where you have to deal with your character. You have to judge yourself. You have to judge your heart. And you have to deal with it in Jesus' name.
Can you say amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for, for today. We thank you for the people. We thank you they're going to have a blessed week this week. And we just, we just honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I guess it's first Sunday. Wow. We're going to receive communion. Amen. Praise the Lord. If everyone would, would you please, uh, if you're ready to receive the Lord's table, uh, go ahead and, and uh, those joining us on the internet today, we thank you for being with us. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We uh, remind you of these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We'll see you this week. And the next Sunday, Olivia Moore will be with us in the morning service. Until then, be blessed to the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you at Expedition Church next time.